There is a concept from software development that I find to be helpful when making things in Touch Designer. It's called single source of truth. It helps to avoid issues that I've seen from a few people that I've helped out recently or collaborated with on projects. This video is going to show what things are like without it, why that can cause problems, and it's going to go through a few different approaches on how to improve things. The examples here are going to be a bit contrived, but the goal is to illustrate a common problem and not to build a project. So you can follow along if you want, but it might be more useful to just watch this one since it's not really about instruction, more just the concepts. Let's say you're creating some geometry to put into a larger scene. You create a geometry comp and go inside it. You delete the default torus. You add a spear sop and change the size. Then you decide you want to have another sphere that's the same size, but has some different other properties. So you copy and paste it, you change whatever properties you want. And then you add, you know, a transform or something on, on the second one. Maybe do some rotation on it. And create a toppy or something like that. Wear these up. So the actual content here is not so much important, just the, the kind of thought process. So you take that, you run it into a geometry comp so that you can render it. And then you decide that you want to have a box and you want that to be the same size as those spheres. So you change the size here, you set to two, drag out from that, create another geo, geo comp, and then you're good to go. So we've done what we set out to do. We created the geometry the way we wanted it, and it will work just fine as it is. Then later on, you decide for some reason that you want to make the sphere a different size. And then also the other things that were the same size should also match that. So you go back in here, you find the sphere, you decide to set it to, you know, maybe three. And then you remember, oh yeah, this other sphere is uh, was also matching that size, so you change that one. And then later you remember that, oh wait, there's also the box, and that's supposed to be the same size, and then you go back in and change that. Now everything works, and you're good to go again. I'm calling this approach truth by coincidence. When you first create the network, you set things to be a specific way, and when you wanted things to match each other, you would just set them to the same numbers. So let's try to clean that up and make it a little bit easier to change. So you go to the first sphere, you take this radius parameter, copy, go to the second sphere, and then you right click and do paste reference. And then you think good, but then you remember, oh wait, box. Okay, so you take the parameter from here, you drag it onto this one and do another reference. And then we're good. So now we can change that size in one place and everything's going to update and all the stuff that's supposed to match that size is going to automatically be updated. But what happens if later on we decide that we want to replace this sphere with a torus? As soon as we delete it, all the expressions that are referencing that are going to break. And even if we didn't do that, we then have another problem here where there's another dependency here where if we want to remove this one, then the box is going to break. I'm calling this approach the web of truth, where there are automatic connections between things, but they're kind of all over the place. And especially if you come back to this later on, trying to figure out where all of that's coming through could mean kind of tracing through all the connections to find that this is the one that's setting it. So instead, we could create a constant shop and say, like, you know, size X. And then, you know, we wanted that to be three, and then you could add a few more, size y, and so on. Set those however you like. And then you could reference those. So you could do, you know, dragging out those channels, do a chop reference, and so on. You keep doing that. And then you could, you know, just to save a little bit of time, copy that and paste expressions so that 
and not reference that this is referring directly to the chop. It's not referring to the other spear that's referring to the chop. And then you do the same thing over here on the box and you paste expressions so that this is directly referencing that chop. So now we have one place where we can change that. So if we want everything to be a different size, we can just do that. I'm calling this approach local truth, since there is a single source for what the size is supposed to be, and it's sitting in the network alongside the things that are using it. In my opinion, this approach is fine. You know, you have the benefits of a centralized source of information where you can change it and then everything else automatically updates. It can be handy to be able to see and edit those settings, you know, while you're in the network with the things that are using them. Though personally, if I'm going to do this approach, I would add a null here and, you know, change that to some kind of meaningful name like, like settings and then reference everything out from there. And that way, if we wanted to swap something out for this later, we could, and then, you know, you kind of have more flexibility. There's another option, which I tend to personally prefer. So rather than having this constant in here where we're putting those settings, we can add custom parameters to the parent component and then refer to those from the things inside it. So you could do that by opening the customize dialog. You could take the size here, you could drag it in and choose, you know, set reference expression and then you could copy that and, you know, do the same thing in the other places. So paste expressions and so on. So now if we look at the parameters on the parent, we have this setting here and that automatically updates everything, which is great. One benefit of this is that if we wanted to have even more parameters in there that were types like, you know, menus or drop downs or something or strings, then we could do that because you can have all kinds of different values as parameters, whereas a constant is only just going to be a series of numbers. It also makes it easier for anything outside of this to control that. So let's say you wanted to have, you know, audio reactivity driving this radius, then you could have your audio reactivity stuff up here, and that kind of changes and controls that parameter, and then everything inside updates automatically. I call this approach external truth, since the parameters that are where the size comes from are outside of the network here, they're on the exposed parent component. One thing that you might notice though, with this approach is that it's now kind of hard to tell what stuff is using that parameter. You would have to poke around and look at the different operators to see which ones have, you know, uh, expressions that are referencing the parent parameter. When we were using this settings approach with a the chop, then it's, you know, really clear because you get like those data connection lines between every operator that's using it. So instead, we can use kind of a hybrid approach here where we still have this parameter and that's where the values come from, but we also use a chop. So you could create a parameter shop and connect that in here and then, you know, reference that, those channels from that chop and so on. So now we're still getting the benefit of having that exposed parameter on the parent, but we also get, you know, these data connection lines to make it clear which things are using those parameters. So once we have all these expressions set up here, then once again, it's clear that these three operators are using parameters from that parent. Another benefit of this approach is that if you wanted to insert a filter or something like that, you can really easily smooth out any changes to those parameters. So now if you change the size like that, it will kind of smoothly transition. We could call this approach kind of enhanced external truth or something like that. The core idea here is that there is one place that defines what a setting is and then other places that reference that. 
So I found that sticking to one of these centralized approaches can be really useful when you're building larger systems, or even if you're just making small things that you might come back to later and might want to adjust or just, you know, understand what you did six months ago. It can be really useful to just know, look at the parameters on that component, and that's going to control the stuff inside it. This video is a new format that I haven't really done before, so let me know if this kind of advice is helpful. If you liked it and want to support me making more, check out my Patreon. You'll get early access to tutorials, scene file downloads, a bunch of RayTK stuff, and more. Anyway, thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe, and switch on notifications.